Welcome to Last Tequila Standing. We are here with Hector Barreto of Tributo a Mi Padre Tequila. That's right. Hector, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you for having me. I'm yeah. very excited about being here. <laughs> so I understand that uh, Tributo is literally a tribute to your late father. That's right. Tell us a little bit about that and how you got started in tequila. Sure. Well, Tributo a Mi Padre was really the brainchild of my father. My father, Hector Barreto Sr., was a nationally known leader in the United States and in the Hispanic community. He was the founder of U.S. Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and many other businesses. And his dream was to have his own tequila. And in 2004, he bought a tequila ranch, about a thousand acres in the Tequila Valley. And he planted his first harvest in 2004. Unfortunately, my father got ill and he passed away soon after he started this project. And so I finished it for him as a tribute to him. So that's where the name comes from, Tributo a Mi Padre. Oh, that's really exciting. So has, um, how does the rest of your family feel about the tequila industry and you being in the business? Are they excited? You know, how, how is that going? Sure. Well, we come from a very entrepreneurial family, so mm -hmm. it's not unusual for any of us to be involved in businesses. My father had Mexican restaurants an import-export company, a little construction company. I've had financial services companies. I had a broker-dealer. I've been in banking. So I've been in a number of different businesses. So this was not anything unusual for our family. Yeah. We, we're an entrepreneurial family. But I think the fact that it is a tribute, I think because it was my father's project, that for us this is very, very special and something that we're very excited about. Yeah, that is really exciting. So tell us a little bit about the bottle design because this is always really exciting to me. I know you and I talk. Mm -hmm. about how um, there's so many tequilas out there, especially in the Mexican market. Sure. And um, how did you come up with the design and what makes it unique? Well, you know, we wanted to do something unique. And uh, a lot of times when you go into a store and you see a lot of bottles, a lot of those bottles are very similar. So we wanted to do something totally different. And I thought of this, you know, since it's going to be a tribute, it needs to be something that is like an, an award that you're giving to somebody. So we wanted it to be tall so that you could almost present it to somebody. Yeah. And also because it's about my dad, we also wanted it to be something masculine. So we gave it some shoulders, we made it a tall bottle, but uh, we're very pleased with the results and we've gotten great feedback off of it. Oh good. So what are what are people saying about the tequila? Well they love the, the, the tequila uh, and you know uh, we started off you know with our launch party of 1500 people so we had a lot of opportunity to sample a lot of folks and you know we love it but you know you never know how the, the public's going to respond to mm -hmm. it but the overwhelming response has been very very positive. This is a very high-end tequila. It's a premium tequila 100% agave obviously a very competitively priced by the way but it's also very accessible and it is also something that a lot of people can enjoy it's very smooth sometimes people describe the blanco as being very sweet for a blanco so uh, so far so good we're, we're very excited and very happy the way it's been accepted by the public oh that's exciting so what are kind of, what are some of the drinks I know uh, we talked briefly there was a coca-cola drink that you mixed well up we, we're, we're doing a lot of things and yeah. we invite people to visit us on our website tributo te tequila.com. We're updating it all the time. We have a number of different drink recipes, but we came up with something that's really simple. You know, a lot of times you know, when people are mixing drinks, they, they may not have all the ingredients or maybe so exotic. So we came up yeah. with something very simple, tributo and cola, tributo and Coca-Cola. Just a little bit of tributo blanco inside of a, a, of a glass, a cocktail glass. You finish it off with Coca-Cola, maybe put a little lime in there. And it, it's just a wonderful, refreshing drink because a lot of times we're used to drinking rum and cokes for example yeah, yeah. but sometimes rum and cokes really are sweet, they can sweet. be very sweet that but is. when you put the tequila in it tributo tequila it changes it's a very refreshing drink and it, and we really like it so that's a very simple drink very easy for anybody to make yeah that sounds really easy i know i know sometimes when you're mixing drinks there's like five million different uh ingredient lists so that's right. coca cola y tributo mix that's right. bien. can't go wrong so, yeah. <laughs> um and i want to talk a little bit about the um going back to the bottle design here. Mm -hmm. um, you did talk a little bit about the wings and the eagle um, you have here on your shirt, sure. also on the bottle. Um, how was that inspired? And well, you know, tributo a mi padre.
is obviously something that is very authentic. It's something that reminds people of our heritage. It's something that reminds people of the relationship that we have with our fathers, you know, tributo mi padre. And, and it's also uh, one of our taglines is por una vida bien vivida, which means for a life well lived. So anybody can celebrate with tributo for any kind of a special occasion. Obviously, the eagle is a very important symbol, not only in the United States, but also Mexico, something again that reminds us of our heritage and our culture. And so uh, that's where, where that idea came from. We wanted it to be something authentic. This is not something that's, you know, uh, uh, you know a glitchy or anything, anything of that nature. This is very uh, authentic, very special, something that really grounds us to the things that are really important to our community and to our businesses. Oh, of course, of course. And you do have, um, you do have three different lines of the Tributo, right. the Reposado, the Blanco, and the Añejo. Mm -hmm. So can you talk really quickly about the flavor profile of mm -hmm. each and sure. what are people liking about the tequilas and why does it make it so special? And sure. Well, you know what they always say is if the Blanco comes out good, everything else is probably going to be good. <laughs> Our Blanco's already won awards. You know, we haven't been in the market all that long, but we've already won some of the highest awards for our Blanco. And also the the, uh, the tasting that we've done, especially with women, they really enjoy the Blanco. A lot of times uh, women will say, well, I, I don't really like the taste of the tequila. Maybe I'll drink it in a margarita. Or I'll mix it. <laughs> I'll mix it or I'll drink one that's a and doesn't really taste like tequila. Yeah. But our Blanco has been really well received. So we're very happy with the Blanco. The Reposado is uh, aged seven months. Now, you know that a lot of Reposados are only three months. So we go twice as long. The Reposado is very balanced. So it's kind of the best of the Blanco and the Añejo. And it's right there in the middle. And then, of course, the Añejo is very, very special for us. A lot of Añejos are only nine months in a barrel. Some are a little bit over a year. Our uh, uh, Añejo is 20 months in white oak barrels. These are, you know, mm -hmm. Kentucky white oak barrels, just like a lot of other tequilas. But the end product has been really sensational. Now, what makes that different for viewers at home? Um, not aging it as long versus like aging in a longer process. What's the different in the difference in the taste? Well, it, it and it, and it, a lot of it has to do with your own uh, preference and your own palate. Obviously, the longer that you leave it in in the barrels, the wood changes the 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 taste profile, and so you'll get all kinds of different tastes. I mean, some people describe you know notes of vanilla. Some people uh, taste herbs. Some people feel that it has kind of you know some vegetable qualities to it. Uh, all of these tequilas are very sweet. You know, we uh, grow our tequila in the Tequila Valley. That's where our ranch is at, right in the historic Tequila Valley. In, in Jalisco? Arenal, yeah, Arenal Jalisco, which is right outside of Guadalajara. We have a thousand acres. And what's different about our ranch is that we're high up in the mountains. So, you know, it just really changes, you know, what, what uh, the size of the piña, for example. A lot of piñas that come out of that region are 25, 30 kilos. Our piñas are 40 to 50 kilos. So a lot more sugar in there, okay. which also helps the, uh, the tequila smooth out and make it sweeter. And for those of who's, for those of you at home that don't know, what is a piña? Well, that's the pineapple. We call it the piña. Oh. And, and uh, you know, obviously the agave is a, a very different kind of a plant. A lot of times you see the, the green stalks and they say, okay, that's a, that's a tequila plant. But they don't realize that underground is really where the tequila comes from. Mm. Because when, they're, yeah, when they <laughs> harvest it, they cut away those leaves and then they dig out that pineapple. And those pineapples are very, very, uh, on our ranch, very large. It could be as much as 50 kilos per pineapple. And is that, are they larger because it is in a higher growth? you know, cultivated area, or why are they so? Well, you know, the, the first of all, the plants that we started off with were really high quality plants. But yes, being up there higher, it's cooler up there. They get more water up there, so it's just a very different than what you see sometimes down down below. Okay, and I've also heard that a higher, um, you know, if it's harvested at a higher level, it's sweeter. It can be, and ours definitely are. As I said, what well, you know, the the uh, the content of the sugars in our in our pineapples was was very high and we were very pleased with that because that obviously really helped uh, you know turn Tributo into what it became. Yeah yeah it's exciting. So where can we find you at here locally for the you know like if I wanted to go to a store what sure. store can we find, stores yeah. can we find you at? We're in a, a lot of different stores and a lot of different both on-premise and off-premise and we're adding more all the time so I invite people to visit, it, visit us and keep track of us on TributoTequila.com.